on today's Driven. These cars look familiar, but they're very different from the ones you know. You could be washing your vehicle the wrong way. And the best present a man could ever get. From Griot's Garage in Tacoma, here's Tom Volk. On today's show, I'm reviewing three different cars, each one a little bit different, a little bit more special than the regular variants. Maybe not quite as special as one of these, but hey, at least you have the chance of affording one. Let's start with the Cadillac CTS. Nice car right out of the box. Go with the Performance V version, even better. But the one that I'm driving really hauls. The regular Cadillac CTS is a top-notch performance machine. This is the high-performance V model with a powerful, supercharged V8 engine stuffed into the nose. 556 horsepower is an awful lot of oomph, but it's what's in back that'll get the neighbors talking. This rocket can haul without going fast. The CTS V wagon is a strong argument that station wagons are very, very cool. Here is one way of looking at it, a high-performance exotic car. You're not gonna see this coming and going every day. In fact, you may never see a V-Wagon with your own eyes. It is that rare, especially with a six-speed manual. A six-speed automatic is available. Just like the V-Sedan and Coupe, the wagon has Corvette velocity, but adds soccer mom utility. Zero to 60 blows by in just over four seconds. Speed isn't much good if the chassis can't tame the curves, no problemo for the CTS-V. You'll need a racetrack to explore this wagon's limits. Drop the kids at daycare first. Up front, the CTS interior is very familiar. There's a fancy light show on startup, and the dashboard gets nice detailing with soft light piping at night. Phones and iPods are supported. Record the ball game for later playback if you have to leave the car. The wheel is grippy suede. Only mom hugs better than the optional heated and cooled Recaro sport seats, though my back didn't like them for long drives. CTS has never had an overly large back seat, but two average sized adults such as myself should be okay back here. A raised seating position and drive shaft tunnel would keep the center passenger from getting too comfortable. As you can see, my size 11s are just fine. Map pockets and a power port will help keep the kids' electronics organized and charged. Seats are nicely bolstered, but not heated. Kind of expected in this class these days. Remember, CTS comes in three body styles, the two-door coupe, four-door sedan, and the wagon. Hmm, wonder which one will hold the most TP. A clever touch, the load floor can also be used as a divider to keep things from sliding around too much. Tie-downs are easily adjustable. CTS Coupe holds four bundles, the Sedan 7. Surprisingly, the wagon stops at 7.2, but it remains the utility champ with a big hatch and foldable seats. There's a ski pass through, too. The V Wagon starts at 63 grand as tested around 69, which includes shipping and the $1,300 gas guzzler tax. EPA rates it at 14 city, 19 highway. So the fuel economy is lousy, few can afford it, and Americans don't like station wagons. But one launch in the Cadillac CTS V Wagon will tempt just about anybody. It's that much fun. Remember, if you're not into station wagons, the CTS and CTS V are available as sedans and a great looking coupe. Maybe you're into something a little bit more green. Ford has a new version of the Focus. It should give you a charge. The Focus is a pretty popular vehicle. There's a three-way sales race between it, Corolla, and Civic. Ford hopes this one charges up sales further, the Focus Electric. It's not like Chevy Volt, the gas filler and tailpipe are gone. This Focus is purely battery power. Let's tackle the common questions first. What is the range? Like all electric cars, it depends. The, the sticker, the label that will be on this car, will actually say a range of 76 miles. But uh, we've experienced longer than 100 miles. The charge time? One of the interesting things about the Focus Electric is it does have ability to charge faster. It takes about three hours using 220 current, the kind your dryer uses. That's over twice as fast as Nissan Leaf and Mitsubishi i. Third, what's it gonna cost to charge up? To full charge uh, here in Seattle for this vehicle is gonna be just over a dollar. So if this car seems perfect for you, you can run down to your Ford dealership right now and pick one up.
if you live in California, New York, and New Jersey. The rest of the country is going to have to wait a little while. Washington and Oregon will see them in the summer of 2012. What you'll find inside and out is a car that looks remarkably the same as the gas drinking model. Even the engine bay looks pretty much normal, but under the shroud, there's a 143 horsepower electric motor with 184 pound feet of torque. There's really no gearbox, it's single speed. To back up, the motor reverses polarity. The lithium ion battery is in the back. Uh, more on that later. There is, of course, no sound on startup. Not much noise once the car's in motion either. I spent a very brief time driving the Focus Electric. Initial perceptions? Handles pretty well. Plenty of power, too. Focus Electric is so normal in operation that passengers might not know that there's anything different about it other than it makes very little sound. The brakes on the Focus Electric should last a long time because even when you apply the pedal, you're really only using the motor generator which charges the battery. If you stomp on them, only then are you actually using the hydraulic brakes. At the price, buyers will have to look at Focus Electric as a long-term investment. So this vehicle um, is just under $40,000. It's a fully loaded vehicle. In fact, there's only one option on this vehicle, and that's leather seat. The second thing is it is eligible for the federal $7,500 rebate. It takes it down to just $32,500 for a fully loaded vehicle. The battery, it has to go somewhere, and the Focus platform is not dedicated as an electric car. The battery pack is the main drawback, taking up a lot of space, significantly cutting into cargo room. At least the seats fold flat to make the space a little bit more useful. Buyers have been a bit wary of electric cars with their higher initial price tags and limited driving range. By making the Focus Electric's charge time twice as fast, Ford hopes buyers will do a double take. Coming up on Driven, this Honda Civic fuels up at home. A Prius-like Porsche. And why you might be washing your car the wrong way. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Hey, Jason. Nice car. Thank you. Jason here is a product specialist at Griot's Garage. It's possible I could be washing my car the wrong way. You could be. What How's have you been possible? washing your car with? Uh, just dishwashing detergent. You know, Ooh. it's pretty strong stuff. Tough on grease. If it's tough on grease, it's probably tough on your paint too. Seriously. Yeah. So. You shouldn't use this. No, it's not just a marketing gimmick. Dish soap is actually designed to strip off grease from your pots and pans. Uh -huh. Imagine what it's doing to your paint surface. Oh, it's going to strip off any of your wax or protectants that you have on there leaving your paint completely vulnerable. It's that strong. It is that strong. So you really should use a dedicated car wash? Absolutely. You definitely want to use something that's non-detergent based, has a uh, low pH level to it, that's uh -huh. not going to strip off any waxes or sealants when you wash your car. That really makes a difference. Huh? Makes a huge difference. Okay, so now I've heard that a classic car like this, people would not use water to wash it? You know, a lot of classic car owners don't want to use water to wash their car. They keep the car out of the rain. They don't wash it. They don't want to expose the chrome or other parts of the car that they can't dry off to water, uh -huh. risk rust, is rust issues, things like that. Uh -huh. so. so what do you use? Well, we actually have a great alternative to that. Our spray-on car wash is actually a waterless car wash product that you can wash a car like this in the comforts of your own garage. Don't you need water to rinse the grit off so it doesn't scratch? No, good question. You actually don't. With spray wash, the idea behind it is when you spray it on, it actually puts a barrier of lubricity between the dirt and contaminants in your paint surface. Ah, lubricity. So when, lubricity. So when you Big go to words. wipe it off, you've got that protective barrier between the dirt and your paint. So when you wipe it off, you're not rubbing a hard edge of the dirt against your paint and risk putting a scratch or a swirl mark in the surface. Seriously. All right, so my first pass, I'm just going to do a straight wipe to remove any loose dirt and contaminants on the paint. Right. And then I'm going to turn it over to a clean side and give it a final buff to remove any of the leftover spray wash residue. So you wouldn't do a circular motion? I would stay away from circular motions. Huh. That's that easy. Wow, it looks great. And it's safe for your paint. Wow, thanks for sharing. Thank you. Now we're going to take a look at a Honda Civic, different from any Honda Civic you've probably ever seen. Nothing about this 2012 Honda Civic looks different, but it does not run on gasoline, diesel fuel of any kind, or even electricity, and certainly not clean coal. It's powered by natural gas. For treading lightly on Mother Earth, this is a very good thing. 
How clean is this car? Well, one study says that on an extremely smoggy day, the exhaust coming out of the tailpipe is actually cleaner than the surrounding air. Wallets will breathe easier too. Natural gas is easily 30% less expensive than gasoline, and nearly all of our supply is produced here in North America. Finally, owners can skip gas stations. A personal fueling unit taps into home gas lines. One disadvantage of a natural gas system is the trunk, or more accurately, lack of. The large tank occupies a lot of the space and keeps the back seats from folding down. For those who often shuttle friends to the airport, consider the suitcase-sized bundle to guide, packed lightly. Other considerations? Well, public fueling stations are scarce, and the home station is not cheap at around four grand with installation. Driving distance drops by about 25%, though fuel economy stays the same. The NG Civic is EPA rated at 27 City 38 Highway. Civic's 1.8 liter four cylinder makes 110 horsepower burning natural gas. That's 30 less than the gasoline version. It's hooked up to a five speed automatic. There's no manual shift mode. Even with fewer ponies, the natural gas model doesn't feel particularly underpowered. The remarkable thing about the Civic natural gas is how unremarkably different the driving dynamics are. Feels like a regular Honda Civic. These days, that means the ride quality and handling are mid-pack. This is transportation for alternative fuel enthusiasts and the eco-minded, not performance drivers. Inside, you'd never know there's anything different about this car. There are no badges or gauge differences. The two-tiered instrument panel will be very familiar to Civic owners. Materials are hard and look like rice paper or an industrial surface, depending on how a person sees it. Personally, I'd choose a darker interior. Looks like dirt would show easily. The back seat is unchanged from the regular Civic. That means two adults will be perfectly fine back here. Three will fit in a pinch. There is storage in the doors, but the features stop there. No folding armrest or mat pocket on the driver's chair. No power port either. The initial cost of running with natural gas is not cheap. This particular car retails for $28,400 before a four grand government tax credit. In total, it's a premium of 2,000 bucks. Good to see Honda doing something different though. Civic natural gas is a unique way to keep the air and your conscience clean. Up next on Driven, a car guy's ultimate Christmas present. Cars are, of course, more than just transportation. They're amazing pieces of engineering, pop culture, even pieces of art. As Lloyd Smith finds out, they're even great Christmas presents and time machines. John Stofflet has the story. Here you go, Pops. Lloyd Smith is about to receive a Christmas present from a Christmas past. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I'm getting emotional about it now. It is a gift from a son determined to make a father's dream come true. So it, it, it's, a, it's an idea I've had and kind of a dream I've had for, I don't know, probably about 10 years or so now. So the idea was really to recreate what happened in, in 1957, the Christmas of 1957. In 1957, Keith's grandparents surprised sons Lloyd and Larry with a brand new 57 Chevy a car those boys simply loved. That became such a uh, integral part of our life because I taught my wife how to drive in that car, we dated in that car, my brother and I went everywhere together, we went to college together in it, we traveled in it. So we, for nine years, that was such a part of our life. Lloyd and brother Larry sold the car in 1966 and for years Lloyd told Keith and the rest of the family selling that car was the biggest mistake he'd ever made. So Keith decides he's going to make dad's dream come true. He searches the internet for a 57 Chevy like the one dad sold. He finds one, has it repainted and refurbished to look like dad's just in time for Christmas. Being a pain in the neck son for so many years uh, through high school and everything else and giving him so, many heartburn, so much heartburn that uh, uh, maybe it was time I give a little bit back. Hang out because it may take us half an hour to to do some stuff. With the car safely hidden from view Christmas morning, 
says surprise look further. Lloyd opens a bunch of phony presents containing nothing but messages. This is shades of, of 1957. Keith had heard the stories about how in 1957 his grandparents sitting right there next to his dad today had Lloyd and Larry open a bunch of phony gifts before giving them a box with the Chevy's keys inside. Let's go up on the hill. Let's go all the way back. Remember, Dad, you said the biggest mistake you ever made? I know what it is. I'm the biggest mistake. <laughs> you like it, Pops? <laughs> Merry Christmas. I was actually surprised. I figured he would uh, he would be really excited, really happy, but I, you know, you know it's not very often you see a 60-something uh, uh, grandfather, uh, you know, break down and, and be really emotional. So uh, it, was, it was very emotional for everybody else as well who was there. I don't think there was a, a dry eye in the, in the house that night. Oh, but this is finally Jed Jeb. <laughs> I just broke down and cried. I just couldn't believe it. For one thing, your son doing a gift like that and then dipping back into your past and giving you something uh, from the past that was so important to you during those years. You just can't express it. Uh, as a father, uh, you feel loved. Pretty, pretty special. It was really special. Lloyd's had his 57 Chevy for a couple years now, and he's even entered it into car shows and has taken home a couple trophies. Next on Driven, what does this Porsche have in common with a Prius? That's coming up. There are a lot of iconic cars out there. For example, think Toyota Prius and what comes to mind? Hybrid, of course. How about Porsche Cayenne? Well, it might have more in common with the Prius than you can imagine. Sports car purists cringed when Porsche first introduced the Cayenne Sport Ute. A funny thing though, it quickly became their most popular vehicle. This is the second generation and there's a new shocker. Yep, a hybrid. Shouldn't be a huge surprise. Porsche has always been about engineering excellence, and there's an awful lot of that in this rig. The first thing that people want to know is, does it get Prius-like fuel economy? Are you kidding? It's a Porsche. It's geared for performance. Still, an EPA rating of 20 city, 24 highway is not too shabby. Go is provided by a supercharged V6 and an electric drive motor that produces a combined 380 horsepower. All four wheels are driven. The transmission is an eight-speed unit that can be shifted manually. For those who are curious, the battery is back here. It's a 288-volt nickel metal hydride pack. Just to be sure, don't take any bets about putting your tongue on anything orange. As long as I'm back here, may as well get the TP test out of the way. Just like the standard Cayenne, the cargo hold swallows nine packs. Now you're probably most interested in how it drives. It does all the hybrid tricks, pulling away on electric power, feathering in the gas engine when needed, charging the battery when coasting or braking, and shutting the engine down at stop lights. The great thing is it does all the Porsche tricks too. Zero to 60 rushes up in around six seconds, a half second off the gas only Cayenne S. That small compromise offers up city fuel economy that's 23% better. Even at high speeds, the gas engine often shuts off, huh, see that? To save gas in what Porsche calls sailing. Handling, all right, what does this say? Right, and while it's no Cayman, dynamics are excellent for a machine that can carry five and do rugged off-road duty. If there were luxury fighter jets, the interiors would look like Cayenne's. Beautifully crafted, it's worth lingering over. Lots of identical buttons to decipher, though. The gauge cluster has this terrific trick. Fill the one on the right with whatever parameter you'd like. This Cayenne's got two methods of propulsion. Why not two car reviewers? Yeah, it's quite comfortable back here. Now you can see there's no space problem with knees, legs, or feet. The seats don't slide fore and aft, but they are well bolstered and quite comfortable. My biggest gripe coming up at around 87 grand is tested. No heated seats back here. That's true, something you'll find on a Hyundai Elantra these days. 
Of course, people expect a Porsche to be pricey. They don't expect them to be hybrids, though. The system is a $4,000 premium over the standard S model. It's doubtful owners will recoup that money through better gas mileage, but there are bragging rights that the Cayenne S Hybrid, a sport ute, is the cleanest Porsche ever. FYI, the Cayenne is not the only hybrid in Porsche's stable. Next up is the Panamera. Well, that's it for today's show. Special thanks to Griot's Garage. That's Driven. I'm Tom Bull.